So this chapter, we're going to look at dermatological conditions. So we're going to be looking at various um, infections and, and whatnot that affect the skin. We're, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of different dermatological conditions when we, when we look at this uh, area of medicine. However, we're going to focus on um, a couple different categories of, of more common uh, skin conditions that you'll see in the, in the active population. The other thing you'll notice as I kind of go through this, I don't have a lot of, I don't really don't have any, hardly any pictures. I show some pictures at the beginning of like primary and secondary lesions, but when I get into the conditions, I don't have any pictures. That's because one of the things that I'm going to have you do as an assignment is to, I'm going to give you some pictures of some different conditions and just see based upon what you know about the characteristics of the conditions, can you identify them? So it's just kind of a different way of um, utilizing the information. So in looking at the skin, so we're gonna look at the anatomy of the skin. First, you have the epidermis. So if we look here, you see the epidermis, which is the top layer, and then you have the four layers that make up the epidermis, the stratum corneum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and stratum basal. Then you have the dermis, which is located immediately below that. Uh, the dermis is made up of more of a strong, uh, yet flexible connective tissue. And you can kind of see throughout the, the dermis, there's various structures located there. You have your hair follicles, you have your sweat glands. Um, you also have your sebaceous glands, which releases oils. Um, and you have them everywhere except the skin on the palms of your hands and on your feet. You have your subcutaneous tissue that then falls beneath the, the, beneath the dermis. And again, when we look at the functions of the integumentary system, again, the skin performs a lot of functions. Obviously, it's our largest organ of the body. It, it protects the body against germs. It helps to regulate body temperature, and it assists in elimination of waste through sweat. So when you sweat, you actually do uh, eliminate waste in that, in that fashion. Then we have the nails. So the nails uh, provide a little bit of a protective covering for the dorsal aspect of the fingers and toes. So each nail has what we call a free edge, a body and a root. And then the skin surrounding the nail forms what's called the cuticle. And then you also have the proximal and lateral nail folds. So when we look at skin conditions, and I said in the beginning, there, there are a lot of skin conditions. Dermatology has a lot of different uh, pathologies associated with it, but we're going to look primarily at a, a couple, couple different ones. And again, we'll, we'll categorize them as needed. So we're going to have skin conditions caused by mechanical trauma. We're going to have skin conditions caused by infection. We're going to have specific inflammatory conditions, and then we'll have uh, some that are caused by environmental exposure. And then we'll have some that kind of don't have a category necessarily, uh, but you know are co very commonly seen in the active population. So we're going to look at at some some skin lesions. Now, there when we're looking at at skin lesions, so this is kind of how when you when you're going through because it can be really difficult to to sort of categorize your your skin lesions or, or be able to make a diagnosis just based on looking at them so if you look at the the primary lesions that usually gives you uh, a baseline for what you could possibly be looking at okay so when we look at what's called a vesicle so a vesicle is a small fluid filled blister um, and there's pictures of these both here and in your textbook this is the only spot where you're really going to see a lot of pictures because as I said, when we're going through the conditions, I'm going to kind of leave pictures out because I'm going to give you a little assignment where you could kind of look at pictures and, and based upon what you're seeing, maybe make a determination as to what you think it is. Uh, a bulle is a thin, it's a much, it's a bigger blister. Uh, so it is, it is, it is another blister. It's filled with fluid, but it's a, it's a much larger size. So the way they kind of differentiate a vesicle from a, from a bulle is a vesicle they say is less than 10 millimeters and a bullet is larger than 10 millimeters. So typically a bullet is what you classically see with a what we call a blister on the skin. In other words, a friction blister that, that people would commonly get. Nodules are solid raised bumps uh, and they typically look at them as being bigger than 10 millimeters. A papule is just a small solid bump, okay? So, you know, a nodule is, so, so with a lot of these, you're looking at kind of like bigger, smaller. Um, and then you have a tumor, 
which would be a, a larger solid lesion. So a tumor would be larger than a nodule. Okay, as we keep going along, a pustule. So a pustule is just that. It's going to be a, a pus-filled lesion. So there you're looking at some, typically some type of inflammation, and it's going to be formed with, with pus. A wheel is a uh, basically a little circumscribed lesions of inflamed skin. Uh, so commonly you would see that in somebody, you've heard the term hives before. Well, hives consist of, of wheels. Then you have scales, which is basically you get excessive epidermis uh, and it tends to, to cause some flaking of the skin. So something very commonly that you would see with something like eczema. Okay, and then we have some more, uh, more lesions here. So you have your plaques. So a, a plaque is basically a, a small, broad, raised area. Uh, if you look here, so this would, be, this would be an example of a plaque. So with a plaque, the area is raised. It's kind of broad and flat. Um, a macule is a, is a flat area as well, but it's not raised, so it won't be palpable. So these would be like, you know, some little blemishes that you would see on the skin. Um, so the, these would be all of your, your primary lesions, all the things I've discussed up until now. Um, your, your book kind of get like, uh, does kind of summarize, and you'll see as you kind of go through the signs and symptoms of the, the various conditions, they'll tell you like what type of lesions you're commonly seeing with them. And that's probably the most helpful way to, to kind of learn like about all the different conditions so that you could recognize them. Because again, it, it's going to be hard with all of them they are, if you could at least kind of recognize the, the type of primary lesions that you're seeing, that could kind of give you some, um, some notice as well. Now here's some, these are the, the two I'm gonna talk about here, these are what are called um, secondary lesions. Um, so first you have what's called a fissure. So a fissure is just basically like a little cleft or like a split in the skin. Uh, an erosion is when you get a loss of the epidermis, so you get a complete um, kind of eroding, if you will, of, of the epidermis, but it doesn't go into the dermis. Now, an ulcer actually goes through both um, the, the epidermis and goes, through, goes into the, the dermis as well. So with the, um, with the erosion, it's a, it's, or the, the ulcer rather, the ulcer basically goes deeper. So like a lot of the other things, there's kind of like a progression you saw with some of them, it was the same thing, an erosion versus an ulcer where like an erosion again, it's just really the top layer of the skin uh, gets, gets destroyed with an ulcer. You actually get it um, completely through the, through the epidermis and it kind of gets deeper into the, the other layers of the skin.